Peace and blessings, everybody out there. Let's go ahead and put that good energy out into the heavens, out into the universe. All praise and glory be to the almighty creator of the heavens and the earth. Happy True New Year's, which begins on this month, Abib. Also, happy Ramadan Mubarak and happy Passover. Welcome to 2022, officially. In the Torah, Exodus 12, 1, it says, Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Deuteronomy 16, 1 says, Observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover unto Yahuwah thy Elohim. For in the month of Abib, Yahuwah thy Elohim brought you forth out of Egypt by night. According to the creator of the heavens and the earth, Abib is the first month of the year, the true New Year's. And Abib began April 2nd. Abib begins on the day after the first new moon closest to the spring equinox, which was on March 20th. Also, Ramadan began this year on April 2nd. This year is a unique year. This year, all three Abrahamic faiths celebrate their respective holy days, which fall at the same time, angel time. Ramadan, Passover, and Resurrection Day, or what some people mistakenly call Easter. These three holy periods align at the same time every 33 years, and the Messiah lived on earth for 33 years. As we are entering the end times, as we are getting closer and closer to the return of the Messiah, we see all kinds of signs and alignments happening. We see all kinds of heads up and warnings happening, and all signs point to the return of the Messiah. He's coming. And the earth is being prepared for his return And before his return There will be pestilence, war, famine, and death my theory is this year, the Most High allowed all three Abrahamic faiths holy days to align at the same time to give all believers a chance to get their final prayers in and get their final fasting in and everybody get a chance to clean their souls and repent before he sends back the Messiah. Right now, all three Abrahamic faiths are in their holy mode. The Muslims are fasting, praying, repenting, and having their iftar feasts, and making the late night Tarari prayers, and reading the entire Quran throughout the month. The Jewish people and the children of Israel are praying and fasting and repenting and observing the Feast of Unleavened Bread and celebrating the Passover Feast. And the Nazarenes, the Christians, they are praying and observing what they believe to be the resurrection of the Messiah and having their feast on Sunday. Some people call that day Easter. Let's expose the origins of Easter. The problem with Easter is that it originally comes from a pagan celebration. Easter was a day celebrated before the Messiah was born. Easter is the worship of the Queen of Heaven, the Moon Goddess, the Whore of Babylon, Semiramis. Another name of hers, Ishtar and Ostra. The pagan goddess of spring where we get today's name Easter. If you watch my Christmas exposed video, then you know all about Semiramis and her plot to be worshipped as a goddess for all eternity. If you haven't seen it, then go check it out. The link will be in the description below. Once again, a Babylonian custom has infiltrated Christianity under the name of Easter. Easter has snuck in pagan customs and symbols such as the Easter Bunny and the Easter Egg, which are symbols of Ishtar, who is also known as the goddess of sex and fertility, in other words, fornication and illegitimate babies. During Easter, little children, they're not thinking about the Messiah. They are only concerned with chocolate Easter bunnies and going Easter egg hunting, looking for Ishtar's egg and and jelly beans. Shaitan always lures kids in with candy, gifts, parties. So when they grow up and have their own kids, they can teach their kids this same never ending cycle, passing down through the generations. Ishtar, aka Semiramis, who was married to Nimrod after he died, she lied to the people of Babylon and said that he became the sun god Baal. And then she lied and said that she was the queen of heaven. The spring goddess, the moon goddess who came to earth in the giant egg that landed in the Euphrates River and she told the people of Babylon that whoever finds her egg, she will grant them any blessing they pray for. So that's where the Easter egg hunter comes from. Every year during the first full moon after the spring equinox, the men of Babylon will go down to the Euphrates River to dig and search for Ishtar's egg, seeking her reward, an egg that didn't exist.
Ishtar was known as a promiscuous whore, and the rabbit represents sex as one of her symbols. She was a fornicator, but called herself the goddess of sex. You ever heard the term effing like rabbits? Because rabbits are known to have lots of sex, and they known to mate a lot and have many offspring. Every year during Easter, the people of Babylon will bake cakes, get drunk, and engage in orgies and prostitutions in the temple of Ishtar, thus earning Ishtar the title, the Whore of Babylon. So every year during Easter, parents are giving their kids energy to this pagan custom, making their kids grow up with the spirit of fornication and sexuality because they are only thinking about the Easter bunny subconsciously putting those seeds in their minds. That's why your daughters, they grow up to become whores and harlots and hot girl summer thoughts and promiscuous sluts. And your sons grow up and they become whoremongers and simps and all kinds of weird freaks and perverts going to the strip clubs and paying for prostitutes and becoming members of the LGBT side of my community. Cause y'all got them random soft effeminate colors for Easter. It's a spiritual energy that comes with celebrating this curse that Ishtar Semiramis put over the earth thousands of years ago. Her magic is still working and y'all donating your kids energy to her magic. And also for Easter, it is popular for many of its observers to eat the disgusting Easter ham pork for this day during their feast. This is a day they claim is dedicated to the Messiah, who was known as the King of the Jews. And we all know Jews don't eat pork. And we all know the Almighty Creator sent down laws in His scriptures forbidding us to eat pork. In Deuteronomy 14.8 and Leviticus 11.7, it says, also, the swine pig is unclean for you because it has cloven hooves, yet does not chew the cud. You shall not eat their flesh or touch their dead carcasses. Isaiah 66, 17 says, Those who sanctify themselves and purify themselves to go in the gardens after an idol in the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse shall come to an end together, says the Lord. In the Quran, Surah 2, 173, it says, Bismillah rahman rahim He has only forbidden to you dead animals, blood, the flesh of swine, and that which has been dedicated to other than Allah. Yet Satan has infiltrated this holiday with ancient Babylonian customs, and he has caused them to corrupt it with the eating of pork on a day that's supposed to be dedicated to the Messiah, the King of Jews. Where did eating ham on Easter come from? Ishtar had a son named Tammuz, and Tammuz went out hunting for a wild boar, and the wild boar killed Tammuz one day on his 40th birthday. So Ishtar instituted the annual practice of killing wild boars and eating them. And today, America is the daughter of Babylon. Let's look at the capital of the USA, Washington, D.C., which was designed by Freemasons who followed the mystery religion of Babylon passed down from generations through the Knight Templar. It's public knowledge that George Washington was a 33rd degree master mason. Look at the top of the United States Capitol building. It's shaped like an egg and it's designed to resemble a woman's breast. And at the top of it, you have the idol of Ishtar standing on top of it. And then you have Ishtar's husband, Baal's penis, which is the Washington Monument, the Egyptian obelisk. This obelisk gives off a frequency that causes people to worship the penis. That's why it's a law in D.C. stating that no building can be taller than the Washington Monument. So this frequency can reach the entire city. That's why Washington, D.C. is the gayest city in America. This is Sodom all over again. And the surrounding neighborhoods around these monuments, they are famous gay neighborhoods such as DuPont Circle. And then you have the Star of Shaitan, which is the Pentagon, which is a pentagram, which is also an anus. Sorry for being so vivid, but we got to expose this sick, twisted place. You have a breast penis anus it's the baphomet the white house is the throne of shaitan the washington monument looks an awful lot like a penis doesn't it the capitol building quite obviously a giant boob and the pentagon well you look me in the eye and tell me it doesn't look like a big anus my god how could we have been so blind? He's absolutely right. Sex magic, sex frequency, Babylon loves sex and fornication. Let's read Judges 2.13. They forsook the Lord and served Baal and the Ashtoreths, and the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. 
again. Baal is Nimrod who died and he was called the sun god. And the Ashtoreths is the different names of Samaramis, the mother goddess, the queen of heaven. Different cultures around the world called her different names. Ishtar, Astarte, Ostre, Isis, Anana, Aphrodite, today Easter. The Most High calls her the umbrella name Ashtoreth. The children of Israel, they keep falling under the spell of worshiping Ashtaroth even to this day. As we can see, she's being worshipped under the name Easter. In Jeremiah 7, 18, it says, The children gather wood, the fathers kindle the fire, the women knead dough to make cakes for the queen of heaven, and they pour out drink offerings to other gods that they may provoke me to anger. When you read Jeremiah 44, the Most High sent prophet Jeremiah, peace be upon him, to talk to the children of Israel to inform them that he will punish them and strike them with famine and pestilence and war because they worship the Queen of Heaven and they burnt incense for her and baked cakes for her and poured out drinks for her. After telling them all the punishments that would come to them, the Israelites replied back to Jeremiah and said pretty much, we will not listen to you. We will continue to worship the Queen of Heaven. Worshiping Easter has a strong grasp on the minds of people even to this day. They don't want to hear it. They want to continue with the customs provoking the Most High to anger and wrath. Jeremiah 44, 19, the women also said, And when we burnt incense to the Queen of Heaven and poured out drink offerings for her, did we make cakes for her to worship her and pour out drink offerings to her without our husband's permission? So Jeremiah replied, Your land will be a desolation and a curse because the Most most High can't bear anymore, and the Most High will strike them with famine, war, death, and disease. The point of the matter is that ancient Israelites were cursed and punished for dedicating things to the Queen of Heaven Ishtar, such as baking cakes and pouring out drinks and burning incense. And today, people are doing customs that are dedicated to Ishtar, the Queen of Heaven, such as making chocolate bunny rabbits and Easter hot cakes with the tea on it that represents Tammuz and Easter eggs and a filthy Easter ham that's dedicated to the annual killing of a wild boar, which killed her son Tammuz. And another mistake that people do on Easter is they display graven images of the Messiah and graven images of Mary and some of them they worship these idols and bow their heads to it and make a prayer towards it. And many of them worship the Messiah as equal to the Most High Almighty or above him or they consider him part of a trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The concept of trinity came from Nimrod, Tammuz, and Ishtar. And Deuteronomy 6, 4 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Mark 12, 29. And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. The Messiah never said there was three gods or a trinity. Ishtar invented trinity with her husband Baal, the father, Tammuz, the son, and her being the spirit or the mother goddess. And the Roman Catholic Church, a.k.a. the daughter of Babylon, adopted that concept and introduced it into Christianity, deceiving billions of people into associating partners with God Almighty. And also many people get drunk on Easter, breaking a biblical law that forbids getting drunk. And it clearly states that drunk arts will not enter the kingdom of heaven. They have corrupted Easter with Ishtar Babylonian customs and symbols. So if you are going to celebrate this day, Stop calling it Easter. Call it Resurrection Day. Easter is not mentioned in the Bible. Stop worshiping Jesus over God Almighty. The Messiah was sent from God to teach Israel how to worship God properly, not to be worshiped as God. And Luke 4, 8 says, And Jesus answered him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Since Jesus spoke Aramaic, let's read what it says in Aramaic. You shall worship Marya Alahak, and him only shall you serve. The Messiah said, worship and serve Alaha only. Now worship and serve the Messiah. And stop displaying graven images of Mary in your homes and churches because that's not Mary. That's another idol of Ashtoreth, a.k.a. Ishtar, a.k.a. Semiramis, a.k.a. Easter. Stop eating pork, stop getting drunk, stop violating the purpose of your holiday with pagan customs such as the Easter eggs, stop symbolizing the Easter bunny. 
otherwise you're heading down a path of destruction for your soul other than that the point of the matter is this is the time for everybody to increase their faith increase their prayers increase their repentance and seeking mercy and forgiveness and increase their charity to the poor and homeless and needy and correct their mistakes and wake up and start doing righteous good deeds because tick tock russia is ready to unleash hell on earth joe biden is thirsty to unleash hell on earth china is ready to unleash hell on earth north korea is ready to unleash hell on earth and this year could be our last year celebrating a normal ramadan this year could be our last year celebrating a normal passover who knows what america will be like one year from now we could be dead or we could be living in a post-nuclear world we could be refugees ducking and dodging and surviving the best way we can scavenging for food and getting sick from radiation poisoning from the nukes we could be in a new world of order concentration camps who knows However, this year, 2022, the year of the great alignment, the Most High is giving his servants a chance to pray to him in unity and practice their respective rites and rituals in unity before he orders the Messiah to return because the return of the Messiah isn't a pretty sight. His return means war and death and destruction. Nations shall rise against nation. So many people who don't live righteous will be put to death. The Messiah said in Matthew 10 34, Think not that I come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. This year, this Abib is a time we have to be on angel time. We have to live as righteous and holy as possible because it's cleanup time. It's time for the angels of destruction to clean this wicked earth of the demon gen worship that's been going on, the LGBT sodomite agenda that's being pushed, gender changing, the Baphomet energy that's being promoted. We have to cross our T's and dot our I's in these end times and walk a narrow straight path. The Adina Soroto Mustaqim, our Lord, show us the straight path. You have people out here that will spend these last days living evil and wicked as hell. You have people out here who never fast. They are against the Most High. You have people out here who will never give up eating pork. They are against the Most High. You have people out here who will never stop going to the bars and the clubs to drink heavy drinking alcohol alcohol getting drunk every night they are against the most high you have men out here who will never stop gang banging they wake up every day seeking which man they should shoot and kill and rob they are against the most high you have men out here right now he's in a sexual relationship with the woman that he know that he will never marry he's willing to spend these last days as a fornicator then to make it official in god's eyes by making her a wife he will never lead that woman into the kingdom of heaven by giving her the honor of being a wife. Now is not the time to be a fornicator in these last days. You got to repent and get married if you are living that fornicating lifestyle, man. You laying up with a chick and, and you having sexual intercourse with her. You got to get married to her. You have wicked, evil men out here who will never stop selling drugs to his own people. They are against the Most High. You have women out here who refuse to dress modest. They will continue to show their thighs, cleavage, and belly until the end of times. They don't believe in the Most High and they don't care about his laws and regulations. They ain't trying to hear all that. They want to get likes and views from the lust of men. Your creator wants you to cover up your flesh and dress in modest apparel. You are a precious gift, so wrap up. If you got tattoos, then stop getting tats. It's forbidden to tat your body up. You got to repent and seek forgiveness and stop marking up the skin that the Most High created for you. There is a sickness and a curse upon this earth and it has to be burned with fire. Us righteous believers, we have to make sure that we not a part of the rebellious people who don't mind going to the hellfire to burn. We have to live the opposite of them. We have to stay away from that wicked lifestyle. We do not want to fit in with the social norms of this wicked society. Society. We want to stand out and be different from the disbelievers. We have to prove to our Lord that we deserve to enter the gates of his paradise. And right now, during these holy blessed days, is the best time to prove ourselves to him by fasting, praying, observing his feast days, giving charity, feeding the poor, and building up our spiritual credit with the Most High, making down payments on our gold mansion in the kingdom of heaven. How do you make a down payment on your gold and silver mansion? You you have to give money to the poor for the pleasure of the most high go buy a homeless person something to eat go send money to an orphan 
There is so much spiritual blessings and benefits when you send money to an orphan. There is so much forgiveness and mercy awaiting you on the day of judgment. We want to be generous to others so the Most High can be generous to us. Visit a charity website, a Zakat website, and donate money to the poor starving families in Africa and Yemen and Ukraine and Syria and all the war torn poverty stricken countries. $10 can feed one person for an entire month in some of these poor countries. $60 can feed an entire family for a month. Even in your own cities there's homeless people give them your change give them a dollar give them a twenty dollar bill who cares what they do with it your intentions is to feed them and you will get reward for those attentions or next time you fill enough gas and you see a homeless person go into the gas station buy a sandwich some chips some cookies and a bottle of water or some juice and just hand it to them and keep it pushing you doing it only for the pleasure of Allah the most high not to be praised and glorified by other humans not to hear thanks from them you want your reward from the almighty one you want your good karma from the all-powerful one if you go to a mosque or a church or a synagogue or a temple make sure you give sadaka and donations and help pay for some of the costs of maintaining your facility your place of worship don't be nagardly with your money don't be selfish it is hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven the camel has a better chance of entering the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the gates of heaven and that's a scary thought being rich is a scary thought in this world of materialism worship we strive to be rich but why you can't take anything with you when you die and it's hard for you to enter paradise if you are rich every paycheck give a little bit of something to the poor and those less fortunate than you you have people in your own family that's poor and struggling give them some money and food and clothes and furniture i don't care if you think you are broke there is someone broker than you with all that being said, the second horseman of war is here. The red horse of war is here. And what is the red horse of war? The Soviet Union flag is red. China flag is red. North Korea flag is red. All these nations want to bring war on earth and kill and take peace away. The other day during Passover, Russia State TV has announced that World War III has begun. So in Russia's eyes, World War III begun and they are ready for it because Russia is angry that they lost their flagship, the Moscow. Last week, Ukraine bombed one of Russia's main warships, causing it to sink in the Black Sea. And now Russia is angry over that. That was a major blow to their military. That was one of the largest ships in their navy. Putin is getting fed up and he's ready to use nuclear weapons to win this war. Putin has warned America several times that supplying Ukraine with weapons will cause an escalation of war and Russia will eventually attack American and NATO targets. Once Russia attack America, it's on and popping. It's over with. Soon nukes will be flying back and forth and the whole world will fall into a nuclear war. And Babylon the Great will fall. Right now, we are in the eye of the storm. It's calm. It's peaceful. It's Ramadan and Passover. We are in the middle of a bib. We are officially entering a new year, a new season, a new cycle. During Ramadan, the devils are locked up in chains to give the believers a chance to fast and concentrate without the whispers and temptations and evil thoughts and distractions of shaitan tempting them to sneak and eat something or cause them to think about worldly nonsense other than remembering our creator and praising him all month. So when Ramadan is over, Satan will be free to play catch up, to cause all kinds of madness and wickedness and disruption all over the earth. So as we head into this May and eventually summer, as we come to the conclusion of Ramadan, prepare for the worst. Expect madness and chaos and all hell breaking loose. Many wicked people out here who don't obey God nor care about answering to him is about to be on demon time, robbing and killing and jacking. When the summer heat comes out, it activates the demon inside these wicked men and they want to kill and shoot all summer. So stay alert. Buy your weapons and your taser and your pepper spray and your guns and your knives for self-defense. Right now, you have to mentally and spiritually and physically prepare yourself for doom and gloom and war and poverty and destruction and the loss of lives and famine. 
The next horseman that comes after the horseman of war is the black horse of famine. Let's read Revelation 6, 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard a third living creature say, come and see. So I looked and behold, a black horse and he that sat on him had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures say, a quart of wheat for a denarius and three quarts of barley for a denarius and do not harm the oil and the wine. This is the horseman of famine that will come after the horseman of war. The horseman is riding a black horse. The black horse represents a blackout. All the power will be cut off. The power grid will be attacked with the EMP pulse that will fry every electronic device. America and Europe will sit in darkness. We will be back to the stone age. Isaiah 47 5 says, Sit in silence and go into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for you shall no longer be called the Lady of Kingdoms. That's why I say buy a Faraday cage and store your flashlights, your solar power banks, one of your old spare cell phones, a radio, perhaps walkie talkies and place them in bags and keep it sealed tight. And for extra protection, place this bag inside a shoe box that's been wrapped in three layers of heavy duty aluminum foil. And for even more protection, buy a galvanized cans and place your aluminum wrapped shoe box inside these and seal the lid with aluminum aluminum tape. You do not want any EMP waves to reach your electronics. So whenever the EMP strikes and after the dust settle, you can open up your Faraday cage and at least you'll be the only one with the flashlight and you'll be the only one with the working cell phone. You won't be able to get on the internet or make any calls, but you can listen to music that you already have downloaded and you can play games that you already have downloaded that don't need internet access and you can look at pictures and reminisce and you can read scripture apps or whatever else you choose to download on your phone. Make sure you download everything you want to download on these phones before you place them in the Faraday bags. Because when an EMP strike, you won't be able to download anything because the cell towers will be fried. There will be no internet, no mobile data, no nothing. The black horse represents darkness and mourning and woe. And this horseman is carrying a pair of scales which is used to measure wheat and barley. This verse says, a quart of wheat for a denarius and three quarts of barley for a denarius. What does this mean? Back in ancient times, a person used to work for a denarius a day. You would get a denarius for a whole day's worth of work. So when this famine hits, you will need a whole day worth of wages just to buy one quart of wheat. One quart is about two pounds. For example, let's say a person makes $15 an hour and they work an eight hour shift. 15 times 8 is $120. So 2 pounds of flour will cost $120. 2 pounds of flour is only 2 loaves of bread. 6 pounds of barley will cost them $120. An entire day wages. That's how bad this famine is about to be. $120 for a bag of flour. $120 for 2 loaves of bread. People will be starving and turning into cannibals to eat and killing each other and robbing each other just to eat. That's why we should be stocking up on as much canned foods and rice and beans and bags of flour now, right now, before the famine comes. Buy plastic containers and just fill it up with flour because there will come a global scarcity of food like we never seen before. There will come an inflation of food like we never seen before. And guess who's the biggest exporter of wheat in the world? Russia. And old Joe Devil has tricked the world into stopping trade with Russia. So already the world has cut off one of the main exporters of wheat, bringing upon inflation. And China is the biggest producer of wheat in the world. And when China decides to invade Taiwan, old Joe Devil will cut China off with sanctions, further cutting off the world supply of wheat, causing food shortage and inflation. You need wheat to make cakes, bread, pasta, and pizza. Without wheat, a lot of your favorite food will skyrocket in price. Last month during a speech, old Joe Devil announced that the world will experience a food shortage. He said, it's going to be real. We got to understand that these people study the scriptures thoroughly. They know their time is up and they think that in their sick, twisted mind, they could change prophecy or manipulate prophecy. 
Make no mistake about it. The government and the elite, they study the Bible thoroughly. They study the Quran thoroughly. They study the Hadith thoroughly. So we got to study the scriptures also so we know what's going on and what to expect and how to prepare for it. And the best way to prepare is we have to fast because when that famine hit, we will have to fast regardless. This is why Muslims have a head start by fasting during Ramadan. When I was a kid fasting during Ramadan, I used to wonder to myself, I wonder if Allah is preparing us for the end times famine. I always had a hunch as a kid that we might be the generation to witness the end. And here we are. If this is it, because only Allah knows best, we are at the brink of what possibly could be World War III, which will lead into famine. And fasting on Ramadan prepared us to handle this famine. We know what it's like to function all day without food and water. We know not to break or fold under the pressure due to hunger and thirst. During Ramadan, not eating or drinking becomes normal. Eat Eating small portions becomes normal. However, when the famine strike other people who never fasted before, they won't know what to do. They will go crazy and they will fold and end up killing other people just to eat. They will end up robbing other people's food supply just to eat kicking their doors to houses searching for food. People will become cannibals. Women will end up selling their bodies just for a crumb of bread. People will become wicked as hell in these end days. That's why it's important to fast, to establish tolerance, to discipline yourself, and to know how to cope and maneuver and function without food and water. And fasting is a constant reminder to always remember that in some poor third world country, there are kids and women who are dying from no food. So we remember those kids and those women and we send money to them to feed them inshallah and while fasting we learn to function by filling our bodies up with the spirit of Allah to energize us praising him and glorifying him will nourish our bodies until we find food also, what does the great famine mean? It means the Antichrist is close to appearing. Before the Messiah returns, there will be a false Christ that will appear and lead people astray. The one eye, the jaw, the deceiver, the Antichrist, the false Messiah. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, warned his people and said before the, the jaw Antichrist appears, there will be three years of drought and famine. The first year, Allah will command the sky to withhold one third of his rain and the earth to withhold one third of his produce. In the second year, he will command the sky to withhold two thirds of his rain and the earth to withhold two thirds of his produce. The third year, he will command the sky to withhold all of his rain and the earth to withhold all of his produce. Not a single drop of rain will fall and all the hoofed animals will perish. And at the end of the third year is when the Antichrist will appear and pretend to be the Messiah. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that the jaw is one eyed and the lie is never one eyed. People will be starving and dying of dehydration and hunger and the Antichrist will appear and make it rain. But it won't be raining in reality and they will see the earth sprouting food. But in reality, it will not be sprouting and people will be deceived by this false miracle and begin to worship him and follow him. A hungry stomach is when your true spirit is tested. The companions of the prophet ask him, what sustains people during that time? Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, replied, Say Allahu Akbar, which means God is great. Alhamdulillah, all praise be to God. And la ilaha illallah, there is none worthy of worship but God Almighty. This will sustain them just as food does. So during the famine, the only way to survive is turn to the Most High and praise Him and glorify Him and have patience. Activate your higher self. Meditate praising our Creator. Elevate your consciousness towards Him. You won't need food or water to survive. That's why we have to spend these final days getting closer to the Most High and building up our spiritual bond with Him because disbelievers will fold and live wicked just to eat. Disbelievers will worship the one I eat antichrist just to survive that is what this whole world has been preparing us for right now this whole antichrist babylonian the one eye egyptian pyramid on the back of the dollar bill all this illuminati freemason it has been preparing the world for the arrival of their master the one eye antichrist strong believers will spiritually be nourished by our creator he might make manna appear before your very eyes 
you could be walking through the wilderness and come across an abandoned bunker or a safe house filled with food and meals ready to eat left behind by some atheist redneck prepper who got killed off. The most high works and miracles for whom he pleases. Look at what he did for Hagar and Ishmael in the middle of the desert. No food, no water, just prayer and weeping to the most high and he made water appear before them in the scorching hot desert. Stay prayed up, y'all. Stay bowed down because old Joe Devil is leading America into war. U.S. vows to flood Ukraine with weapons. Old Joe is sending $800 million worth of weapons to Ukraine. And Russia has warned the U.S. that there will be unpredictable consequences if U.S. sends weapons to Ukraine. Why is old Joe Devil so invested in this war? He's possessed with frog looking demonic spirits that's leading the nations into the great war. At first, Joe Biden was obsessed in making sure everybody received the liquid snake bite downloaded into their arms. Now he's obsessed with leading America into World War III. So many people lost their jobs because old Joe Devil forced people to take the snake bite or lose their job. Joe Biden is punishing the American people and now America has to suffer with high gas prices and high food prices because Joe Devil wants war with Russia. Look at this alien shaking hands with the air. Is Joe Biden senile and crazy or is he shaking hands with the invisible reptilian gene that we can't see? Is he shaking hands with Shaytan and we can't see it but only Joe can see him? He got caught slipping. Or is Joe Biden a robot that had a glitch? Whatever he is, he's not human. And Revelation 16, 13 says, And I saw three unclean spirits that looked like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. There is alien genes that is possessing the kings of earth to gather them to battle. Joe Biden wants battle. Putin wants battle. Chinese President Xi wants battle. North Korea wants battle. Iran wants battle. Israel President wants battle. And Zelensky, the comedian actor, is calling all nations to come enter World War III in his country, Ukraine. The valley of where St. Jehoshaphat was born. Like a Pied Piper, all the European nations are following his call into their own destruction. All the kings of the earth is possessed by alien genes and ready for battle. War, War 3. And Russia wants this war to be over by May 9th, which is the same day they celebrate their victory parade over Nazi Germany in World War II. What does that mean? That means expect Russia to turn up the notch to achieve that goal by that date. Who knows what Russia will do to win this war? But we all know the end game. Nukes and chemical weapons. After a bib is over, after Ramadan is over, the party begins. Shaitan is free. I'm out, y'all. I want y'all to go ahead and press like and subscribe and hit that bell notification button so you don't miss out on my next videos. And thank you for watching another episode of Mo True TV, the realest channel on YouTube. Thank you.